Fish and Freaks, welcome back to the channel deep in the heart of Texas nuclear summer. Today we are doing something wild, crazy, that I got from another guy's video, my boy Lojo. You know, I watched this video when I was talking to him about it and I was like, dude, what is the deal with the marshmallows? How are you catching fish on these marshmallows? He says, man, I don't know. I talked to an old guy that told me the marshmallows are the deal and I throw the marshmallow out there, I get one in like 10 seconds and I've been catching them on them ever since. Marshmallows are a thing. And I've been sitting here thinking, I'm like, man, I catch them on bluegill, I catch them on shad, I catch them on some other things, stinky stuff, but never a daggum marshmallow. Is there something up with the Alabama catfish? What is up with those fish eating the sweet stuff? Are they gonna do that in Texas? I don't know. I mean, what are the diabetes levels between fish in Texas and Alabama. I would argue they're probably pretty similar. We're gonna put it to the test today, see if we can catch some catfish with the family on the water with some marshmallows. Let's go. And today's video brought to you by the last cast end of summer sale at googleswat.com. Using that promo code LFG as always to save 10% at checkout. Got some killer deals on the site right now and it's linked down below. So if you're trying to get your hands on some plastics, maybe you're running low from getting slurped on some worms all summer, some apparel, some long sleeves, just protect yourself from the, from the sun. I'm a big fan of the sun gloves. Anything you want to get your hands on, we got deep discounts on everything. GoogleSquad.com right now is brought to you by GoogleSquad.com. Now go, LFG, use the promo code. Okay, now like I said, I'm taking the kids out today. They heard the word marshmallow, they perked up, and they wanted to come with. Now if you missed the last video where I took the kids out, my goodness. Uh, that went viral on social media. I mean, I don't know how many millions of people saw my son just going into the water and it was a scary moment. So for God's sakes, if you're taking the kids out, put them in some life jackets. You never know when they're gonna go overboard. You just don't. Today we got much calmer conditions. I'm feeling better about them being on the water and we've got a more controlled environment, especially cat fishing. We'll go over the methods here. So here's what we're gonna be doing. I just got these in. These are our rod holders that can basically attach to anything. I had some other rod holders for the crispy. I tried to put them on the boat, they didn't fit. I got these off Amazon. They were literally here in like six hours and they're made by these Placino, Placino I don't know, but they got a four and a half inch, uh, just about a four and a half inch gap on them. So on this Vexus that doesn't have these slots like a lot of other aluminum boats do to put your rod holders, uh, these will actually fit on there. So I could take these on and off keep them out of the way when I'm bass dangling, crappie dangling, and when I want to catfish or do some trolling or something, I can slap them on there. Here is the other method. So we're gonna do some drop lines on those. I'm gonna show you how to rig the drop lines here in a minute. But this is the other method, and this is uh, this is just the jugs. Now I have cheap homemade uh, noodle jugs. I use those mostly. A lot of my stuff is packed up right now from the garage fishing. If you guys keep up with the videos, you know we are we are in the middle of moving right now, and it is uh, it is it has just been one of those, man. So I'm looking forward to get out on the water with the family today for a little stress relief. My theory is on these marshmallows. I'm not for certain, but I think they're going to float. Normally, I like to put little corks on my line because I do think that makes a difference with catfish. When you're fishing for cats, you have your your bait corked. It's off the bottom or even on a jug where it's floating keeping your line from getting twisted. I love that. So I've got uh, one line rigged up with corks on it already, and we're gonna rig these drop lines as well. So at least one jug. Let's head into the garage. I'm gonna show you how to rig the dropper lines, the hooks and tackle I'm using. Then we're gonna hit the lake and try to catch some fish on some stay puffs. All right, so they're not actually stay puffs. We've got a generic brand. This is OSG's doing. She went to the grocery store, we like to we like to save money around here. Little little discounts go a long way. So large marshmallows, we're not going with the super jumbos, you know, like the, the roasters you would put on a campfire marshmallow, but I think these are gonna be per perfect for a hook size. And this is sort of what we're dealing with here. This is the, this is the anatomy, if you will. These are uh, circle hooks that are rigged up with dropper loops. And the dropper loops are really nice because they stick out from the leader. And I've got a um, just a little snap swivel that's on the top there and then a loop that's on the bottom where I can put a weight. And here is another example uh, right here. So this is my weight. 
So this is a three ounce. Wow, I totally just missed that looking through at the LCD screen. So this is a three ounce weight right here. This is typically what I like to use. Two to three, uh, sometimes going up to five if it's like really windy or very deep water. And then we have our, um, this is a, these are four aught. Four aught circle hooks. And these are floats. Corks, just cheap old corks I got from the store. Uh, rigged on one of these dropper loops. And of course at the top again we have our our snap swivel so we can quickly snap that on. This is the bank line that I use. This big old roll right here has lasted me uh, a couple of years and um, that stuff right there goes a long way when you're when you're just trying to get meat. That is some meat getting rope. All right, so I've got two rods that we're gonna be using in the rod holders. And I, I'm hoping that the marshmallows actually float and I don't even have to use floats on this. With your dropper loop, you're gonna take your line. However big your loop is, is gonna be how big your uh, dropper loop is gonna be. So I'm gonna take about a foot from the end of the line. I'm, I'm doing an arm's length and I cut it. So that's for me. I don't know, probably about five and a half foot or something like that. And then I'm gonna take it about a foot down and I'm gonna form a loop and I'm gonna tie a granny knot. Okay, just an overhand knot. And then I'm just gonna tie two more of those. I'm gonna go in one more time, one more time. So I've got three wraps on that. Then I'm gonna take my index finger and I'm just gonna place it right there. And I'm gonna take the tag or the, the rest of the end and I'm gonna start doing the exact same three thing, three wraps. Okay, when you do that, you create, you've basically got six wraps in there and you've got a gap in the middle. And you take the bottom of that loop right here, the bottom of the loop, take that and it gets a little tricky. You almost need three hands, but you'll stick that through that gap, the bottom of the line, through that gap. Okay, and I'm gonna grab it with my teeth then I'm going to take the other two lines, like this, and I'm going to start to tighten it. And when it gets about right there, when it starts tightening up, then I'm going to just lick it. I'm going to tighten that up, and then that's my loop. I like to make these about two or three inches long. And then I'm going to take a circle hook, and I'm going to tie a palmore knot. This is mono, by the way. And you want to push that down almost to the knot there. And obviously the shorter that you have your loop, the, the, um, the stiffer your line is going to be and the more it's going to stick out. But two to three inches is pretty good. So got that dropper loop on there. Now I'm just going to tie a loop knot with this end. There we go. And then I can put a weight on there that I can just wrap, uh, wrap around. So this is a big one, but I'll just use it as an example. So take one of these weights. This is a six ounce. This is a big boy. But it's got that, that hole in it, and I'll just go through, stick the weight through. Bam, it's done. And then I will put a, um, a swivel up on the top right here to tie to the braid. All right, fishing freaks, we're on the high seas. My kids are kind of pretending to be pirates on this thing, so just go along with it. I'm actually going to uh, pick the fam up here on one of these points. We live close to the lake, which is nice. Definitely gonna miss that when we move. So first thing I'm gonna do, throw our one jug out. And I'm gonna wait for them to uh, kind of come meet me. I'm gonna go grab them, we'll see if we got anything. And then I've got some even better spots that we're gonna go to drop lines, throw the jug. All right, we'll grab our jug here and we'll, let's get to work. Well, the cool thing about this one I've got here is I have my line hanked up and it's just inside of the jug, put the cap on and uh, it's, it's very tangle free. So if I had a bunch of these laying around, it would do pretty well. We're going to put our snap swivel on that loop. And then attached to that, we've got our two floating corks, four odd hooks, and our three ounce weight. Mallow up, shout out to my boy Lojo. We'll see if this works. These are, these are hot and steamy. Uh, this time of year, it's, it's, uh, it's not too difficult to get bait, you know, catching bluegill and shad. But in the winter, man, it's, it's kind of tough. So I'm really interested to see how these do. How they're gonna stay on the hook. Are they going to float? Let's put the cap on. No, 
let's see. Oh, the wallows float. All right, this could be a game changer. So I'm gonna send this down. Here we go. Jug is out. Hang on a minute. I see a marshmallow. Dad coming. I see a marshmallow. I see a marshmallow floating. Not good. Not good. Ahoy. Ahoy, matey. You got your chameleon yeah. hanging out. Yeah. And we got mommy. Oh, come on. I have to Here I come. Wait, can you please scoot over? No, I hit this feet. All right, we got to do life jackets. Mm. Oh, I didn't bring any towels. Hey, let's bring well, we're gonna fight over the captain, the co-captain chair. You want to you have it? No. You excited, young man? Yeah. See that smile. He's holding on his hat. He knows what's up. So I'm not 100% on these marshmallows, y'all. Oh goodness. There you go. I'm not 100% on these marshmallows, and uh, I'm gonna try to get a bluegill just in case. I've just got a random brush pile out here. Okay, Ben, don't fall in. Remember what happened last time, buddy. Can you eat a marshmallow? I have black Everybody's excited about marshmallows. Okay, here, here. You guys can split that one. Ben? Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. Marshmallow on the boat carpet. Here we go. It's just not as, uh, not as sticky on the hook as I thought it would be. All right, we got our one gill. And we got our marshmallows, which are not staying on the hook. I've done some drops with them and they just, they float off. I don't know the secret, but we're about to uh, come on and uh, get up on an area that's got a lot of shad activity, white bass, catfish hang out underneath them. And so we're gonna drop a, a gill down at least, and then we're gonna drop these mallows. Just have to keep rebaiting them if necessary. have a gill we're gonna throw it out on our jug and then we're gonna drop some ballos in this spot kids bring me the gill bring me that pirate hat too put the gill in the pirate hat i'm making this gill walk the plank no i tried to get it for you i definitely know how to get it but he missed her what is this attitude <laughs> what is that attitude? <laughs> All right, why don't you let me get it? Then you're gonna learn about life. You're gonna learn the old ways. The old timer here. Woo! It goes through like butter. Here on the uh, Silver Bullet, we keep um, keep a board and a knife to do all things. Just wipe it. It's not going to hurt any more than it does. Just wipe it off. So it's Drop our jug right here. Is it staying in here? Yeah! It'll go away. Would a marshmallow make you feel better, Amy? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yes, girl. Yes, girl. Hang on. She will move a fish head to get to a marshmallow quick. 
Oh my gosh, I think you're feeling better already. It's still alive! Go ahead and grab one. I'm only giving you an extra because you've already had four because of this little bluegill incident. It is still alive, isn't it? Okay, I don't really think these are staying on the hook. It's kind of easy to tell because you just look back and there's a white thing floating in the water. No, maybe because I bought the off-brand Kroger brand. The off-brand? You should have went with Stay Puff. Huh? Maybe, the Jet Puff. Or Jet Puff. I went with the Tom Thumb brand. We do have a catfish out here though. Look at that! It came right off! No it didn't, it's floating the hook. That's incredible. How it floats up like that. Alright, the kids are fighting over the rods. We just had a white bass. I let Emmy reel it in. And I, we really need to look at this jug, Emmy. Are you looking at the jug out here? Can you see it? Can you spot it? Can you be my first mate and spot it? I'm trying to figure out if there's a fish is if a fish is on it. If it's it's bobbing up and down, if it's moving. This is a this is a multitask job. I am uh, trying to play white bass captain, monitor catfish. That marshmallow has freed itself. Oh goodness, what do we got here? You think there is some movement? Are you seeing bobbing? What are you seeing? Oh my gosh. Big crappie on my spoon right now. Oh, I got him. Ben, Ben, Ben. Go reel it up, Ben. Reel it, Ben. Go reel it up right over here, Ben. No, ben, over here, buddy. Daddy's rod, daddy's rod. It's a crappie easy. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. Go, 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 go. Don't let him go, son. This is your big moment, your first crappie. <laughs> let him do it, let him do it, let him do it, Emmy. You can do it, you can do it. Sling him in, Ben. Sling him in. You got him. You got him, Ben. You got him. Big crop pieces on the move. Come up here, Ben. Come up here with Daddy. <laughs> you caught the fish. Good job. I think that's about a 10 incher. That's your first keeper crappie, son. Do you want to give it a smell? You'll learn. You'll learn, son. <laughs> okay, let's let it go because it's hot. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Woo! There it goes. Next one you won't catch mine. another one. And it's not his turn, it's mine. We gotta find, I think, I thought I saw it kind of bobbing, so. Yeah, I thought so too, but bobbing. There's so much boat wake, it's hard to yeah. tell. You know, we just, we threw a jug out there like, oh God, that's a big wave. Yeah, dad was not ready for that one. That was, that was the old uh, turn around and I'm in boat wake. Let's get ready, fish are on the line. Yeah. Leave that one, we got a cat, I think we got a catfish on this jug, Amy. This one? No, no, out here, look, look, you see that? No. You see that jug? Yeah. It's like a milk jug, right? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna grab it and then we might actually have a fish on here. All right, let's clear the deck. Oh. Let's clear the deck. Clear the deck, guys. I actually don't feel anything on here. <laughs> Darn it. Nothing? No. Oh, both our baits got taken. Oh my gosh, we had a fish on here though. It took one of the corks and we got catfish slime on it. So we definitely, we got, we were too late. Daddy got stuck in the crappie zone and fish got off. Sorry guys. Check one, two, check one, check two. Everybody hanging on? 
All right, y'all, well, coming back in. The Molo thing, I don't know. I don't know if that's actually a thing. It could be the temperatures. It could be the, the warm water that was just making the mellows break apart, but I'm gonna do an experiment right now to see if there's another technique to rig these where they're not coming off. You know, I think I remember Lojo telling me he put them in the, uh, in the freezer or in the fridge to keep them a little stickier, but even if I did that in this warm water, they'd break, they'd break apart very easily. You wanna do a marshmallow experiment in there? Sure. The pirate hat thing, the kids yesterday, they wanted me to be the lead captain on the ship. They thought it'd be uh, just cool to go out there on the water. What did you think about the both of them in the boat last night? That was a little much. <laughs> I got the hiccups. <laughs> you, got the, you got the hiccups. I got the hiccups thinking about it. I think Ben is great. You can handle him by yourself. He's a great little boat rider. He loved that boat ride, man. On the way back, he had a little gas and he got pumped. Oh, yeah. And he didn't fall in this time. No, he was a great little boat companion. Emmy, Emmy was a little bored. <laughs> So I got to thinking about the rigging, if there's a different way we can rig one of these marshmallows for it to stay. So we're gonna take a room temp mallow. I'm gonna take a, a little thing that I can just poke through the center here. This happens to be a blow dart. Eat it through, there it goes. Now I'm just gonna take a little six aught EWG treble. Now we've got triple, triple grip on there. We'll see if that'll hold up in the water. I think it's gonna just come undone. We'll see. We have a marshmallow on a single hook, marshmallow on the treble, going into the tub. I gotta wait on both. So I think what is happening in the, mall, in the mallow is it's so buoyant that it's pulling against the hook. Okay, we just had a mallow separate and that was on the single hook. Separating, I see it, we're at a minute and 21. And there it goes, just popped off. A minute and 30 seconds. So it was really about a 20 second difference between the single hook and the treble hook. Still not long enough. And if a fish comes along, well, it's game over. So I was really excited when I first started this video because I thought it'd be an easy solution when I can't catch bait to just use the mallows to go out there and catch them. But I don't definitely don't think it's a good solution for jug lining. But if you guys have ever used them and caught fish, please let us know in the comments down below how you did it. But I think for now on my catfishing adventures, I'll stick to my shad and my bluegill. So thank you guys for tuning in to today's adventure out on the water with the family. Don't forget to tune in for more outdoor action and life vlogs here at the Treehouse and beyond. We'll see you on the next one.